Hello, my little zebras. My name is Elena Vince, and I'm a physical therapist specializing in pelvic health, joint hypermobility, and corrective exercises. I myself am also hypermobile and have personally lived through a lot of experiences that my patients and clients have as well. And today I want to talk to you about menstrual products for use with joint hypermobility, more specifically menstrual cups and discs and how they might interact with pelvic concerns when you have connective tissue disorders like EDS. Now, reusable menstrual products are really having a moment right now and for good reason. For the cost of one to two boxes of tampons, you now have a product that lasts one to five years for multiple periods, right? Additionally, instead of changing a tampon or a pad or a liner every two to three hours. Now you are changing a cup or a disc twice, maybe three times a day, meaning you can get through a work shift, a social event, a good busy part of your day where a bathroom might not be as accessible without having to worry about trying to hold in an oversaturated product. Additionally, we have environmental concerns where now this reusable product lasts so much longer than these disposable products that can't be recycled and just go to a landfill. The word I have heard from a lot of menstruating people that have tried these products is game changer. Just because once it's in, you don't really feel it. You don't have leaks if it's a well-fitting product. And again, you don't need to change it as frequently as you would disposable products. So they really have a great place in our society for people that are menstruating. I am personally a huge fan of them. I am not being paid to sell any of these products. I wish I was because I do truly love them so much. And when I am working with people for pelvic floor therapy, I love talking about these products and how they can have a space for you and your menstruation. But when we think about connective tissue disorders like Ehlers-Danlos, there's a few more questions that are involved. And a lot of it revolves around the use of a cup rather than a disc, and can we safely use these products? So let's talk through some of that today. Now, when we think about these main reusable products, there's two different camps. There's the menstrual cup, which a lot of people are now becoming more familiar with, or there's a disc, which is a little bit shallower. And the main difference that we have here is the amount of suction. So the cups rely on a bit of suction to kind of maintain their structure and placement. So with insertion, you're typically folding over the cup, inserting into the canal, and then letting it spring open with a suction, okay? Versus a disc, has a little bit more of a looser placement closer to the cervix and it uses anatomy to stay placed, okay? Where this becomes an issue is when you're going to remove the product. Now, with either product, you want to slide a finger in and break that seal to give a pinch and pull it out. But if you don't break that seal or you're having a hard time grasping the product. Some products have a stem, others do not, where maybe it's just a little bit of a pinch at the bottom. If you don't break the seal and you are just pulling there, now you're pulling on a suction product that can be pulling on that organ system and that fascial system. Fascia is the connective tissue that surrounds muscles and helps them to glide on each other. It surrounds organs and provides that suspension to our organs, especially the pelvic organs, which is what we're thinking about right now. So if you have a suction on that fascia and it's pulling down, that potentially has the implication to facilitate or worsen pelvic organ prolapse. Now, pelvic organ prolapse is when an organ is moving into a space where it typically does not exist. So more often we see this in the pelvic cavity when the bladder starts to fall into the vaginal or rectal canal, 
or the cervix or uterus begin to descend a little bit or the rectum begins to fall into that canal. This can exist on its own. It can exist with a mechanism of injury like childbirth or with chronic constipation, or it can just exist entirely on its own due to poor fascial connections like in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And pelvic organ prolapse is also a diagnostic criteria for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So now if we potentially have a suctioning effect from a cup that might be pulling on this fascia that is potentially already compromised, then that could make pelvic organ prolapse worse if it already exists or start to create a little bit of that structural disintegrity. So this is where a lot of the concern comes with using a menstrual cup when you have EDS or HSD, hypermobility spectrum disorder, because we don't want to worsen that fascia that's already a little bit weaker. Now, when it comes to the research, there is none. You can scour the web and there, there's just not enough research to support the use or say that you shouldn't be using a menstrual cup or disc or anything to that effect because it can worsen this. This is just based off of suspicion and just a little bit of, of knowledge about menstrual cups and fascia with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Now here's the thing. All cups aren't created the same. All people aren't created the same. And EDS in and of itself is a spectrum, right? So you can have better or worse symptoms. You can know that your fascia is crumbling just by sitting there or having a surgery or, you know, messing around with it. Or you can say that you're generally hypermobile, but your fascia is fairly intact. There's a wide range and that's why it's so difficult to make a blanket statement for something like this. So here's how I think through this. You can have really terrible fascia with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and you can know this about yourself. You can even know that you have a low grade one or two prolapse because a pelvic floor therapist told you or a gynecologist told you. And you could still potentially safely use a menstrual cup and that would be okay. But you have to do it correctly. When you go to remove the product, you have to make sure you are breaking the seal of that product before pulling. Because if you are just continuously pulling on the stem, then that can create more of that drag and that suctioning effect on that fascia. If you know that you have mobility deficits, you have a hard time reaching to obtain the product, you have a hard time breaking the seal or getting your fingers into a good position, then maybe the menstrual cup is not for you. You could try the disc and see if that works. There's a lot of different shapes and sizes for that as well. But I would hold off on using a cup that has that suctioning power if you are going to have difficulty obtaining it. But if you feel fairly confident in your ability to remove this product with a little bit of practice and being able to break that seal and not repeatedly tug on it and tug on it, then I think it's safe and that's okay. Now, part of this is also going to be a self-risk analysis. If you already know that you have pelvic organ prolapse and you're fearful of using these products, then maybe it's not for you. I myself know that I have a grade one bladder prolapse because I was diagnosed in a few of my pelvic floor classes, but I also know that it has not gotten worse since using these products. It has not gotten worse over the course of five years because I don't have chronic constipation. I haven't pushed out a child and I feel fairly comfortable with being able to break that seal and take it out and not worsening that prolapse. But that could change, right? Maybe in another five years, my body is doing something different and I need to reevaluate and switch products. But I wanted to make this video so that you're not fearful of trying these products. They're different fit. Sometimes it feels a little bit bigger. Sometimes it feels like it's sliding around. You need to go based off of your body type, what you feel and what fits best for you. There is a website called putacupinit.com, which I highly recommend to all of my patients and clients. And again, they are not paying me to say this. They don't know that I exist, but that's a really good one to compare side by side, different menstrual cups, different discs 
And again, the discs don't have that suctioning effect. So that might be the answer for you if you want to try a reusable product, but you don't want to have to worry about the suction. Try a disc. That might work really well. Now, anecdotally, I have had some pelvic floor patients that I've been working with that have pelvic organ prolapse, and they have found benefit from using menstrual cups and discs almost like a short-term pessary where it then creates a little bit of support and push out against those organs and it feels better with their symptoms. So if they are more symptomatic during certain times of the so if they are symptomatic during certain times of the month, that can actually help to relieve some pelvic organ prolapse symptoms. So there's a lot at play here and I know that this video doesn't provide a whole lot of answer, but I wanted to provide this as a means for saying that you don't need to be fearful of these products if you are interested in trying them, even if you have a chronic genetic disorder like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. They can be of benefit to you, but also think wisely about it. I know that I have issues that might get worse with this, but I'm also very confident in my abilities to insert and remove, and the benefit well outweighs the risk for me. But that might not be the case for you. So I hope this does answer some questions and maybe makes you excited to try a new product that can make change the game for you and your periods. That would be fantastic. Just know that there are a wide range and a wide spectrum of these products, just like there's a wide spectrum of Ehlers-Danlos and joint hypermobility. Good luck, stay strong and bendy.